You guys are always asking me for videos about the free stuff or budget-friendly activities that you can do in your house. Today, we are focusing on fall-themed activities and I can't wait to show you the ideas I have to share with you. Hey, hey you guys, it's Christina from the Purple Alphabet. Let's do some free or budget-friendly fall-themed activities. I've actually done several of these over the years, so I'm gonna put them up in the corner or down below in the comments so you can watch it after you watch this video for even more ideas. They're still great ideas, they, they never expire, so go back and watch those for more inspiration. It's totally hard to believe that we're here and summer's fading away and fall is coming right into play. Kind of sad to see summer go, but also looking forward to the new season. So we are gonna come up with some great free activities to do for fall, plus some budget-friendly ones that you can do right away in your house to get ready for the fall season and learn at the same time. I would love it if you hit that subscribe button to join us. We do educational activities for kids and ideas and inspirations to learn through play, plus some hauls and giveaways and all that good stuff in between. And today it's all about the nice, fun, free and budget-friendly activities. I try to show a whole range of of activities for different age ranges. You can also adapt some of these for the older kids or for the younger kids, just depends on the skill level. Without further ado, let's get on to those activities. Everything I'm gonna show in this video is budget friendly or it's a free printable. This one is a free printable and of course I'm gonna put the link down below so you can go right to it to find it. This one is for classifying nature. So you print out these mats. This one says tall versus short. We have fat versus thin, hard versus soft, rough, that's supposed to be a rough, it just didn't print, versus smooth, big and little, and we have large and small. And I do like that they made the fonts large and small for an example here. What I'm gonna show you throughout the video is ways to use these activities for different age groups or give some recommendations. So if something's too easy, try to adapt it to make it a little bit harder. And if something's too hard, adapt it to make it easier. That way you can use it amongst different age ranges or maybe you have multiple kids, you can all use it together. So these are great sorting mats. If you're gonna to try to do this with your smallest ones, I would definitely pick one of these to start out with. Just one that you think they're gonna be working on. Tall, short, hard, soft, rough, smooth. If you have older kids, you could probably add in a couple more of these. So for instance, let's just take large and small. And then you're gonna want to go outside and do a little bit of a treasure hunt. Now, I just went outside in my backyard and picked a couple of things that I found laying around on the ground. You might have different things than I do. I don't have big maple trees or leaves to use, but that would be a great thing right now for fall. And you're gonna just discover a tray of things that you could bring in to do your classification. You can also do this activity outside, which would be a lot of fun. So you would take your items and you would compare them. For instance, I have two rocks here, so we'll put one in the large and then one in the small. And you can do your whole entire tray that way. This is a great way to do something during a nature walk, kind of explore what you have in your backyard, and then you're learning classification and sorting, which is a really basic principle in science. Next up, I have an activity that was inspired by my recent Dollar Tree shop with me. So they have these burlap leaves. This one's orange. There are several different colors and different styles of leaves. And then I also picked up this cross-stitch set, but I'm only gonna be using the needle and thread on here. The thing about these cross-stitch sets is that the needles on here are plastic, which is the reason why I got this particular one. So I'm gonna pull this out, and plus it comes with the yarn. You can buy yarn individually too at Dollar Tree. And then there's our little needle. And then I have a tray also from the Dollar Tree. You don't have to use this, but you can just to kind of set the things, the materials on to present. And then our burlap leaves. Now these leaves do come with a stem that's to put them on wreaths or, or in different craft projects, but what I would do is cut that part off or even peel it off. It's just glued on there before giving it to your kids, like that. Then I would go ahead and pre-thread one of these just because it's a little bit hard to do on your own to get them started. And then what you're gonna have is a simple lacing activity using the burlap leaves. Now your younger kids are just gonna be poking this through wherever they can get it through. That's totally fine. Your older kids, they might be able to form around the edges and even older kids would be able to do it over and under, over around the edge. You could also use these as decorations when you're done around the house. You can also lace all the burlap leaves together if you want. Lacing is a great fine motor skill and using that coordination in your hands and strengthening your hands. So something like that. So it's a burlap leaf lacing all from the Dollar Tree. I adore this free printable. This one is all about categorizing 
leaves. So it comes printed out like this, and then they also have the ones with the leaves on them in color. I already cut them out, or this is what it looks like. And then you cut them all up into cards. I went ahead and organized mine in a little organizer here, and it just makes it kind of fun and pretty to do. So you can do this several different ways. My first recommendation is to print out two copies of these and do a matching game for your youngest kids. A really simple matching game and learning all of the names of the leaves and what they look like. Next is to use them like three part cards. So I went ahead and cut some already. I just cut off the names here. And then you can do a matching to the correct one. So we have a maple and we have an oak and just match them to the mats. You can not use the mats and then have them match just the labels. Whoops, that's an oak. Match the labels right to them. If you have leaves in your backyard, maple, ficus, ash, ivy trees, that sort of thing, you'll be able to get real life samples from your backyard and then match them up to the pictures of the leaves. Like I said, we don't have a lot of trees in our neighborhood that fit these categories, but if you do, it's a great opportunity to match the leaves up to the pictures. Once again, this one will be down below in the description box. You can go and print it off right away and you can use it in many different ways. I also recommend laminate these so that you can get some use out of them over the years. And if you're wondering this little container, I think this one came from the Target Dollar section or maybe it was Dollar Tree, but you can pretty much find a lot of these kind of containers in Dollar Tree. All right, moving up in difficulty level. I love this one. I don't have an apple to demonstrate it for you. We've eaten our apples this week, but this is an apple investigation. Usually every year we go to the apple orchard to pick our own apples and this would be a great supplement to do after that, especially if you're doing a homeschool lesson. I like that it has has just basically a complete science observation in it all in one sheet. So this first one is to draw a picture of your apple, which they will do here. And then how tall is my apple? So you'll measure it. And then does your apple have a stem? Yes or no? Does your apple sink or float in water? So you'll just get a glass and see if it floats or not. You'll cut it open and ask you how many seeds are inside. So you'll do a seed count. And then do you like the way your apple tastes? So you get a little taste test. This one says, describe your apple after one day. <laughs> What's it gonna look like? Of course, we all know that's gonna brown. This one says, how big or round is the apple? And my apple weighs, you're gonna measure the weight. And then down here is to color the apple slices that describe your apple. So we have red, yellow, green, sweet, and sour. So there's a lot of things to do just on this one sheet, which I think is amazing, which I really Really like. So you can just use this and guide through every activity to fill it out. Once again, a great opportunity to use this after you go apple picking, or you can just use an apple that you get from the store. Another outside activity to do is using a sidewalk chalk. So just create little boxes on your sidewalk. This is perfect for kids who are learning their counting, or you can even use the ABCs. For our purposes, we're going to do counting and you'll just put a number inside each box and your kids are going to gather that number of one object that they find in nature. For example, maybe three rocks and place it in that box. It's a great reinforcement for counting. It's a hands-on activity. And then you can adapt it for even harder kids by using addition or subtraction, or maybe even using phonetic letter sounds. This one is probably my hardest one in the video. So this is probably going to be for your elementary children and up. This is why the leaves change color. You could also use this with the younger kids. It's just, you're gonna have to be more hands-on and guide them with it. So we have a whole explanation here about the process of leaves changing color, along with a diagram of how it works with the sunlight, carbon dioxide, and oxygen and water. Then we have a true and false sheet here for reading comprehension of what they just read, and then a cause and effect chart. So this is a diagram where we have cause one, one side here, and then over here, then so effect. And so you cut out these little boxes here and you fill in the blanks of what's happening. So lots of sunlight equals what? And you'd have to choose one of these down here, the green leaf, less sunlight or oxygen to fill out the cause and effect diagram. This is a great investigation of why leaves change color. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. I like it when you share your ideas and you guys can read each other's ideas. It just makes me so happy to see that the community is growing. So be sure to do that. And if you haven't already, make sure to click that subscribe button to join the Purple Alphabet family and give me a thumbs up to show your love.